Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 107 where you send me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. I'll do my best to answer them. Let's get right to it. There was a paper email sent to me in case I missed it. Somebody had already sent me a digitized copy, but uh, it's a cartoon clipping from a newspaper of the old cartoon Beetle Bailey. It's been around for a long, long time, and it's Beetle looking out. It's just a one-panel shot where he's looking out at a wide, flat horizon, and it says, Why are all of our globes of the world round? That's it, and it was done in uh, November of this year. So thank you to the person who emailed, or I'm sorry, who snail mailed me uh, that shot. And again, you can, you can shoot me anything you want through the regular mail. My, uh, post office address is in the description box of every single video I make. So thank you for that. Beetle Bailey. Also like to get one from this morning out of the way because today is Saturday, which means it's college game day. And today, of course, the big game of the holidays is army Navy. And it was interesting, and Jason Johnson sent me to this, uh, sent me this, which is from a, a tweet from Justin Taylor from Fra Flat Earth United, Flat Earthers United, where he was actually at the game, pretty sure he was, and you can see behind the announcers in the game, they're holding up signs, and one of the people says, uh, the Earth is flat with an AE map, and with four corners of the Earth marked on the outside, and another one right next to it says, wake up people, written in the exact same font. And, and signed. So we had several people there in the background. That's re that's really, really awesome. And so it was caught on camera. So if you guys want to check that out, it's the Army Navy game, uh, college game day show on ESPN when they were interviewing uh, the coach from Navy. So it was awesome. So thank you. Thank you, Jason, for sending me that clip. And in fact, I'm going to use that as the thumbnail. I'm going to chop out the, the part where our signs are in the background and use that as the thumbnail for this show. So thank you very much for that. This one's called Sherry Veronica regarding Flat Earth Observation. Hello, Mark. If we can see the light from our sun, in fact, many suns, that is millions of miles away from the Earth, then we should be able to see the sunset at the end of the Flat Earth. We don't see the sunset at the end of the Flat Earth. Also, it sets in one place, the west, and rises at the opposite end, the east, the following day. How do they do that? What then can this mean? Many things, I suppose. Science is wrong and lying to us. We see dimly and poorly. The sunlight in the sky is not millions of miles away from the Earth. There are more than one sun. The Earth is computer generated or the Earth is somewhat globular. But let's go with the flatter scenario. The Earth may be flat, but it has dimples, mountains, hills, valleys, water refraction, etc. Not to mention, again, humans' poor eyesight. Hence, we never be able to see the sunset unless we live or near the edge. Given the time to think, we can figure out all these things out for ourselves. However, it is still fascinating that they've managed to fool so many for so long with the globe-only model. I'm sure the pyramids and the moon matrix are matrixes. I'm sorry, are machines that help in the brainwashing process. Whatever the outcome of this is, I'm pretty sure that scientists and others in power uh, are having full knowledge on the subjects, cannot be trusted to tell the truth. That's from Sherry Veronica. Yeah, uh, a lot of things we still don't know, but one thing everybody can agree on, that it's not the globe. Uh, not, not, in fact, I, I was mentioning this on an interview recently where I said that, uh, remember, if it's a court case, I'm trying to prove the court, the globe in a court of law, and I put so much reasonable doubt in the globe, but the only place you have left to turn is something other than the globe. And that's where the globe just, just dissipates, and you can't go back to it. Now, you may not go back to the AE map, and there's lots of people that don't do the AE map or do a dome or whatever you want to do. You know, it's, uh, but what they, everyone can agree on is that you cannot go back to the globe. There's just not enough evidence to go back to it. But thank you for that. This one's called Flat Earth Aussie Jesus here. Good day, Mark. Been a follower of your work for quite some time, as you may already be aware. I'm doing my first live interview this Saturday. 
or 10 a.m. Sunday in Aussie time on the Non Sequitur Show. I'm sure you've heard of that too. I'll be debating the cretin called <laughs> Fight the Flat Earth, which I just heard you mention recently, so I thought you might like to give the truth a chance and promote this world-changing event where the truth smashes the idiots, still believing we live on a spinning space ball once and for all. I appreciate you spreading the knowledge and ask you to bring along as many spectators as I know you're capable of sharing the word to. All the best, my friend, Flat Earth Aussie. Uh, but you can call me Roscoe. Nice. Uh, yeah, I know the uh, the non sequitur show. <clears throat> they they like to do debates, and there are a whole bunch of uh, debates already in the can, where they bring on flat earthers, and then they bring on globalists, and they have them go toe to toe. I don't like their style. I don't like their format, and I don't like the language. And I know people say, oh, you're a Boy Scout. It's like, no, I am not a Boy Scout, but there's a time and a place for everything, and that place is university. Wait, was that, did that come out right? Anyway, I, yeah, if people going to want to watch it, go ahead, but don't be expecting a fair fight. Uh, the, the non sequitur show is hostile territory, and everybody knows that. Well, anybody that's worth their salt in the flat earth knows that. So watch it, but don't expect too much out of it. But thank you, and I hope you do well, uh, Flat Earth Aussie. I really do. This one's called Object in Front of the Moon. Mark, I think that I have heard you say that the ancients believed in the possibility of dark planets and stars and that these could be what possibly causes eclipses. I took a picture of the moon this morning. Take a look at it and zoom in. It looks like there is another circular object in front of the moon. Perhaps I moved my phone when I took the picture and caused this. Don't know. Regards, Daniel Hobbs. And let me take a quick look at his shot. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a kind of a far away shot, uh, but no, I think the the sun is is self eclipsing and the moon is self eclipsing, no different than they would be in a planetarium. So if the, doesn't there doesn't have to be a physical three dimensional object or even a two dimensional object that appears in front of these things. I mean, you can do it with software. Remember, God is the greatest programmer that ever existed. This one's called Freemasons cost us a fortune. Uh, hi, Mark. Here are some picks for you. The first is a rendition of a Puma Punku, P Puma Punku stone or Punku stone. You guys can look it up if you get a chance. It's P-U-M-A-P-U-N-K-U. -U -U. It's been on Ancient Aliens a number of times. Stone that I made for a small retaining wall outside of my house. I cemented it right in. The second is what I believe to be an authentic skull and bones coat button. Found it in Lower Manhattan. The third is the Freemasons insignia. I found outside my house. Lucky two, I wasn't using my metal detector. And the last two are bricks from Wall Street, Lower Manhattan. A friend heard about an excavation site being halted by archaeologists and paid the night guard to look the other way. Boy, the 80s were great. You mentioned my question in Q&A 106. I was happy to hear you. I thought it was a good point. Does the moon show any slow progressive transition or oh, if so when was it uh i don't know uh okay i hope you like these pictures see you letter Jean. and so yeah there's a puma punku and the skull and bones button possibly skull and bones button and yeah definitely a masonic uh little artifact there very cool and the stone that was chiseled out of something yeah it's cool cool stuff neat that's from Gene. Thank you, Gene, for sending those. I don't know if any of them uh, I'm going to use for a thumbnail. I really like the the Puma Punku shot, though, because you're right. That I mean, it's if you guys want to look up an ancient uh, relic building site, that's a great one to look at. All right, moving on. This one's called JFK Jr. is still alive. Now I believe it. All right. Hi, Mark. It's Alma. I know you don't report on this, but I wanted to share. I am 99% convinced that Q is real and that JFK Jr. is alive and might be Q. Please let me know what you think. Stay flat, Alma. Uh, I will look at those nine pictures when I get a chance. Thank you. Thank you, Alma, for that. This one's called Interview One Has Blocked Content. Mark, I just noticed that your interview number one has a WMG copyright block on it. That's from Bill. Uh, yeah, so what happens every once in a while, you guys already know this story, is that I'm, I'm a big fan of copyrighted music because you don't get 
strikes for copyrighted music. You'll you'll get blocked eventually. And so I'll just I just roll the dice and and I use them. Uh, most of the time they'll just you know because they'll get the nickels. So if I use somebody's song, whatever it is, like in this case uh, for the interview number one, and I didn't even use the song. It was used on that particular program, uh, which was called um, uh, what was it called? Fakeologist Radio. And Fakeologist Radio opens up their show with Major Tom from the 80s. You know, that, that song from a long time ago when I was in high school. And I used that for a long time. I used it for three years. And then finally, whoever decided to own the song wanted to block it. They wanted to make sure that nobody on YouTube was using it except their people. Uh, they, which is kind of weird for me because they get the, they get the money anyway. They get the YouTube nickels regardless of who uses it, but they just didn't want, they wanted to limit who, who had access to the song. And so all of a sudden my very first interview was blocked. So I have re-uploaded it. And what I do there is I just take the, the interview, I compile it here because I've got the audio, I've got everything on this machine. And then I re-upload it. I remove the song before I do it. And... Um, then I put re-upload on the title and then that's it. I just, I delete the old one and the old one, I, I think didn't have that many hits, like 32,000, something like that. And just took it down the old one. There you go. So you'll see that from time to time. And if you guys notice something that's completely blocked, uh, that maybe I missed by all means, email me and say, Mark, I can't see blah, blah, blah. And whatever it is, because there's a lot of stuff out there. Remember, I use copyrighted music for most of the time. It's for Strange World episodes, and then if an interview uses their own music on their own website, uh, I'll I'll use that. Sometimes I won't cut out the music. Sometimes I'm just lazy. So thank you for that, Bill. This one's called "Interesting Fe Experience." Mark, I experienced something that I believed offers definitive proof of the FE. It'd be great to share it with you and allow you to reproduce the experience for yourself. I request anonymity and confidentiality in our discussions. That's from Chris. Uh, Chris, no cliffhangers. Anybody that listens to my show, don't give me cliffhangers. Don't, because I get a lot of emails. Don't email me and say, I will tell you this super great secret. All you have to do is email me back. Tell me what you, what you got. And if you, the confidentiality, just list that in the email somewhere, usually in the beginning. And of course, I won't use your, I mean, I won't, I'm not going to use his last name or his phone number that he put here. Uh, but as far as definitive proof, it, look, I've heard it all at this point. If I don't think there's a stone that hasn't been unturned, but if you do think you do have one, just send it to me. Don't, don't cliffhanger me. It drives me insane. It's not one of my ultimate pet peeves, but it's, it's up there. This one's called curvature over small body of water. Hi, Mark. Okay to read on air. See? This is regarding that recent Q&A episode 105 or 106 where the writer asked about doing tests over a small body of water. Yes, it can be done, but gets increasingly difficult. The same formula still applies, but now you're dealing with fractions squared. For half a mile distance across a pond, it would be eight inches times one half times one half, or would be equal to eight times one quarter, which is two inches of curvature. For a quarter mile lake, 400 meters approximately, it would be eight times one sixteenth or about one half inch of curvature. Measurements by laser or telescopic lens would fail as an outdoor body of water that is that large quarter mile would surely have some small waves or ripples that only need to have an amplitude of a half an inch and would therefore interfere with your ability to see the other side. So the test would be useless if you want to prove a flat earth. I suppose you could do it indoors, but I've never seen an indoor pool that is 400 meters long. FE Core had the right idea. Ideal test conditions are a large frozen body of water with cool air temperature and a monochromatic laser to minimize refraction. Take care, Jack. Yep, he's absolutely right. That's why small bodies of water are tricky at best. This one's called Proof of Curve. Mark, still waiting on your reply. Oh, okay. Let's see what he's got here. I don't think, I think he's a globalist, but let's see what the questions are. Here's how perspective would work on a flat earth. There's a link to something from APS8.com. Oh yeah, debunk. It's a debunking site. Debunk flat earth images perspective. Here's why the flat earth model can't claim that the sun and the moon just go too far away to see. Also from the debunking site. Uh, here's a real experiment done correctly showing moonlight does not cool. Uh-huh. Yeah, let me know how that goes. It's amazing. I don't see a lot more of the moonlight doesn't cooling videos on YouTube. 
uh, sorry, I'm going to take Rob Skiba's word over it. Here's proof of curvature. They're all on the same website. Uh, and what it would look like if the sun were seen in front of the clouds, a 32-mile sun below the 8-mile high clouds can't work. Now it is time for all flat earthers to stop being stupid and wasting everybody's time. And that's from Richard Lynch. And his email address, if you want to give him a piece of your mind, is curved, C-U-R-V-E-D dot earth. That's uh, at APS8.com. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. It's his own specialized Flat Earth debunking site. Hey, thank you for dedicating an entire site to trying to debunk Flat Earth. And I'll tell you what I've been telling people for the last three years. All you're doing is firing wooden arrows into a bonfire. It seems from a distance that you're actually doing something. You're actually accomplishing something. But really, you're just making the fire bigger. That's all you're doing. Your best bet is to not give us any attention at all. I, but I'm wasting my breath because it's driving you nuts. And honestly, your last line said it all. And that is you're just calling flat earthers stupid. Uh, look, name calling isn't a rebuttal. Uh, yelling isn't a rebuttal. And profanity isn't a rebuttal. So if you're using any of those to try to come after us, like in this case, calling us stupid, uh, all you're just saying is you're, you don't really have any points. I, I know you're trying to make the points. Stop trying. It, it's, it's only a matter of time at this point. It's already spread too far. But thank you, Richard. This one's called China to land on the dark side of the moon. Hey, Mark, I just noticed this one on Drudge and thought you might find this one comical. I don't think they, they'll, they'll be able to land on the dark side of the moon unless they have a drone with a drill bit that can penetrate the, the dome. <laughs> yeah. And that's from the standard.co.uk news, Chinese spacecraft to land on dark side of moon for the first time. Uh-huh. Be well, Nick. Amazing the Americans aren't covering a lot of that. Why? Because it's not there. The, in fact, the Chinese are just doing it for propaganda. It's like, oh yeah, we're great. Why don't you put men on the moon? Why are the Chinese should have the technology to put men on the moon? In fact, they should have been doing it for a long time now. Why aren't, why isn't anybody on the moon right now? It's the big thing. All Every science fiction movie we've had out there for 40 years has been talking about moon bases. It's, it's like moon bases was already assumed. It's like, oh yeah, we got, we got moon bases. We got moon, but no, it's in real life, it, it's not there. Why not? This one's called Get Three Glasses of Wine and One Hour and Watch This. Greetings again, Mark. I don't agree with all of this, but lots of good stuff. Enjoy keeping flat in Louisiana. That's from RH. And the video, what is the video? It is 200,000 year old levitation technology from Michael Tellinger. Oh yeah. People send me stuff about Michael Tellinger every once in a while. But if I get a chance, I will, I will, I will check it out. This one's called Five Questions, 12 Slides, and Survival Guide. Mark, good afternoon. Please send me the Five Questions, 12 Slides, and Survival Guide. That would be very appreciated. My belief is that the firmament is, was, a sheet of water or ice that protected us from the sun. I believe that radiation from the sun is what is literally killing us. I believe that the firmament shielded us from this harmful radiation and... That is why the Old Testament records people living 900 plus years. When God flooded the earth, the firmament fell to fill the earth with water. This made us lose our shield and thus we can only live about 10% of what we used to. I also believe that the world was far more advanced in a lot of ways before the flood. It's cool to think about, but they didn't need buildings because the sun was not affecting them and there was no rain. We think of advancement in today's times as massive skyscrapers and skylines, but I believe that these were not necessarily before the flood. I'm on the line, but I'm not reeled in yet. It's, a lot of people use that fishing reference. It is easy. By the way, that's a troll reference also. Um, it's, it's Something just get lost o over time that, with the, the meaning behind them. People say, oh, you're being trolled. A lot of people don't think immediately they think of bridge troll because of our we go back to our childhood thing it's like oh a troll you know they live under bridges and they come out and they eat people or eat things and or movie trolls right uh the trolling is actually a fishing reference i and i know some people are listening going oh no i already knew that and it's like well no unless you unless you actually go fishing a lot you don't know trolling is fishing with a moving boat usually that's what it is. You go out in a boat and you set your, your line and your trolling jig and it, uh, 
you, you ha have your boat moving and you're trolling with a moving lure for fish, hoping the fish will take a bite at it. You're, you're giving the, the fish a moving target, something that's, that's shiny and, and, uh, and appetizing to them. And that's what trolling is. You're trying to get a reaction out of people. You're trying to push their buttons. And so anyway, sorry. I'm off topic. Uh, I just mentioned it because this guy's talking, throwing a fishing reference because he, he knows full well what trolling is. Uh, it is easy for me to see how the earth may not be a globe, but hard for me to believe that the sun and the moon are just images on a screen, as you call them. I believe that they are real objects that God created in Genesis 1. I would be interested to hear your responses. I also watched Capricorn 1 last night per your recommendation and loved it. I would recommend it to any of your viewers. Thanks, Kyle. Yeah, uh, let me answer the last one first. Capricorn 1, a late 70s movie um, starring James Brolin, O.J. Simpson. I forget the third astronaut, but it's okay. There's a huge cast in this, and it's about a fake Mars mission which was that they faked the Mars mission because they had some technology gaps. Not that the entire space program was faked, but just the Mars mission and how they told the astronauts to just hang out in an Air Force base and shoot it on a, on a movie set. And then how things went, went sideways really, really quickly. And so I recommend that to anybody. If you haven't looked up Capricorn 1, definitely watch it. It'll, you'll complete it will put a lot more doubt in the the entire nasa program or any space program for that matter the other thing here which was let's see uh the earth and sun and the moon are just it's easier for me to say how the earth may not be a globe but hard for me to believe that the sun and the moon are just images on a screen uh why why if you go into a planetarium we've been doing the moon on a screen for years and the technology wasn't even that great i mean we're just talking rear screen projection or sorry, front screen projection and we've been doing it really well for some time now so why why would that put anything down especially with the tech we've got we've got 8k mon i mean if you had enough money you could use 4k or 8k monitors if they have 8k monitors i think they're only 4k at the moment and make an entire ceiling of those things and make them make it beautiful uh, in fact, look up a, a, a company I've mentioned several times called Colux, C-O-E-L-U-X, which makes uh, skylights for ceilings that don't go anywhere, meaning they can put a skylight in your basement and they can simulate a sun in a blue sky and the sun will follow you perspective wise. And it's brilliant. In fact, it's very, very bright and they put it in buildings and people do not know the difference between that and a real skylight on a sunny day. We can do that right now with small screens. So what is possible for an advanced civilization with technology that is far beyond ours? Uh, it wouldn't take much. This one's called, hey, what's up with this? Hey, Mark, I haven't spoke to you in a while. Really wanted to forward you along this. And it's a news story. Really hope you are well, Daryl. All right, Daryl, what would you send me? China's icebreaker unloads cargo in Antarctica. And it's the Chinese doing some stuff in Antarctica, some supplies for their China to build its first permanent South Pole airport. Hmm. Interesting for their scientists. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Good one. And you're right. Uh, it's, that's an interesting story. I would like to see what the Chinese are doing down there. I mean, there's a lot of countries down there, but there's no corporations down there. So their airport, no doubt for their scientists, because up until now they've had to borrow everybody else's airports. This one's called 67 kilometer view across water. Hey, Mark, great morning for a photo across the Gulf St. Vincent this morning. Clearly 67 kilometers. It was easily seen without my P900, but the photos make it easy. We'll call you on the show today. And that's from Lincoln. And yeah, sure enough, he's taking shots from 67 kilometers away. That's great. That's great shots of a uh, grain silos on the other side of the water. And he even has the close-up shots of the grain silos. But yeah, you absolutely can see him. There's the atmospheric distortion uh, bl blurring them uh, from the bottom up. Yeah, good shots. Thank you for that, Lincoln. Awesome. This one's called Robitussin Commercial. 
Uh, hey, brother, I just saw a Robitussin commercial where they are mocking Flat Earth and jokingly mentioned the Earth is flat and then showed it being really flat. Just thought you should know it was uh, five minutes until midnight, which I thought was interesting as well. And who sent that to me? Zen Garcia from sacredwordpublishing.com. I got a chance to see him down at the conference in Denver. And he's a great guy. You should check him out. He's also on Truth Frequency Radio, Secrets Revealed by Zen Garcia. Great, great guy. And if you're a biblical scholar, he's got, he was one of the first people I know that touched on the book of Enoch and how the flat earth unlocked a lot of things for him. So good stuff. Thanks, Zen. Oh, and I, in fact, I put that Robitussin commercial on the very beginning of my last Strange World episode. I, I, I liked it so much that I, I found it and I, I cut it. And it's very, very short. I mean, not 10 seconds and, or 15 seconds. And, uh, but it's, it's, it's interesting take. And again, we're in people's heads. So thank you for that. This one's called Flat Earth Draft Picks. Dear Mark, thank you for spearheading the Flat Earth Renaissance. I've just spent the last three months sleeping in a flat earth reality. Prior to my flat earth awakening, I was awarded a U.S. patent for an astrophysics invention based on the spherical earth and heliocentric theory. Is there anyone I could talk to about a flat earth, uh, flat earth version of the invention? I'm in the rough sketch phase of this. There are parameters and dynamics that require flat earth data and other technical details. I was thinking if Jaron and his TFR co-host created the flat earth sun moon clock app, Perhaps they might talk to me. I really appreciate Jaren's pursuit of accuracy and experimentation. Also, I appreciate your wisdom in removing yourself from potential scandal, which I understand one Logan Paul could have, could have embroiled you in had you been available. It was a real coup. Uh, on another topic, I'd like to talk to a biblical flat earther about a theology article I've been working on for more than a year. I've just seen that the biblical flat earth reality is an integral part of the article of which I had perfect been perfectly unaware one year ago so now the article is finished i'd like to do the most good i can and i'm sinking venues and avenues for this thank you uh very much for taking the time to read this with kindest regards alan and yeah i will f it, alan if you're listening to this send me your article and i will fire it off to people in the biblical side of flat earth heck i'll even take a look at it myself and as far as, uh, also you might want to email Jaron and Bob and Iru and those guys directly if you get a chance about trying to create a, whatever the astrophysics invention is that you're going to apply to Flat Earth. So cool. Thank you for that. This one's called Earth is a Flat Project. Hello, Mark. This is a high school student that is currently working on a project, and I have to prove why the theory of the Earth being flat is real, and I just watched your YouTube video where you explain the theory, and it makes a lot of sense. I'm looking to add more information of this topic because for the project, I have to persuade my entire class into thinking that it is actually real. Is there anything that I could show or something that I can prove? Why, when you're on an airplane, there is a curvature on the horizon? Oh, boy, here we go. Because I'm going to get debunked, but I still want to shut their idea down. Thank you. It would really be helpful if you could help me with this, uh, Mariana Sanchez. And, yeah, I sent her several things. One, I sent her the Flatter shortlist for new people. And then I sent her the testimony shows list uh, for, from the, the playlist that I have on my YouTube channel. That should help a lot where, where she's going because, you, again, her opening line... Uh, there's a curvature on the horizon when you're on an airplane. Really? Show me a picture of that. Somebody take a picture of a curvature from an airplane and put it on whatever your tablet is or laptop and put a straight edge up to it and tell me there's a curvature there. And then send me a, uh, send me the shot and I'll quit Flat Earth. Send it to me. Three years. Nothing. This one's called Shell Beat. Hi, Mark took this picture while driving by, so it's not great, near Pismo Beach, California. And that's from Elizabeth. She's been around since 2015. And it is a shot of, guess what, uh, the Shell Beach Road exit. That's awesome. That's great. If anyone knows the Shell Beach reference, that's from the Truman Show. Oh, I'm sorry, not from the Truman Show. Uh, that is from Dark City. Uh, which is how do you get to Shell Beach? That was like the running gag throughout the very serious movie, which is everybody knows that they've been to Shell Beach, but no one can remember how to get there 
because it doesn't exist. They removed, it, it didn't exist. They, they implanted the memory of the beach in people's heads, but they didn't tell them how to get there because there's no way to get there because it didn't really exist. It's brilliant. In fact, I made one of the titles of my stuff, uh, Shell Beach. This uh, is called Whidbey Island. Mark, I'm a self-taught non-spinning baller. Sorry, not spinning baller. When I was younger, I would think how if we lived on a spinning planet that people, let's say in Seattle, would have to walk at a funny slant, but they didn't. I also thought of high tide being not in sync with the moon or sun being overhead and why they did not pick me up. A few years back, the whole thing came to an apocalypse. A part of me had to die. The part that could visualize planets and stars in an ever-expanding universe, all the National Geographic I read, they should have known. But I reconciled with the young me who was much smarter than the older me. I have boiled it down to the plane I live does not curve or spin. This I know with all of my being. With this simple truth, the fools, the liars have been easier to spot. I have been living on South Whidbey. For almost nine years, a recent documentary of you showed a lot of the island, and I had a fit of joy to discover you are from here. Happy, happy face emoji, Kyle. He actually wrote happy face emoji, Kyle. Yeah, uh, the documentary Behind the Curve, which you can check out at BehindTheCurveFilm.com. It was shot in a whole bunch of locations across the country, Houston and Dallas and uh, uh, Raleigh, North Carolina and Los Angeles and Portland. Uh, but a lot of it was shot up here in the Northwest, up on Whidbey Island. And yeah, thank you for that. That's awesome. And uh, also, he mentions National Geographic on there. Uh, f funny timing, because in two days, on Monday evening, National Geographic is finally going to run the thing they shot earlier this year. Uh, they're going to run it on their show, National Geographic Explorer, which is on their own channel, National Geographic. And I should be in it along with other flat earthers that went to the Arcadia meetup and that Arcadia meetup, boy, that, that got us some, some mileage. Uh, you know, Patricia got, uh, her, her segment on CBS news from there and I was on there on a different thing. And it was, it was, it was one, one, lots of things, lots of great things came from that meetup in Arcadia, which was done by Netta Hagler. And, and thank you. Thank you so much for that. This one's called Watch Joe Rogan Experience number 1211, Dr. Ben Gertzel on YouTube. Not exactly sure why that was sent by Michael. Michael, I'm not going to watch that entire thing. It's almost two hours and Ben is not the easiest guy to watch in the world. <clears throat> so if you get a chance, give me a time date stamp or a time stamp on that video and, and let me know what exactly I should be looking for in that video. Thanks for that. This one's called, Hey, please, two minutes of your precious time. Mark, I'm going to copy and paste a message from a very, very dear friend who is in Florida and whom I thought would get it above anyone else I'm trying to wake up. What do I say to this? And the guy said, The reason radio and television signals do not travel far before needing to be tossed along by another tower is that they are broken up by the horizon curvature of the earth it is not distance they travel at the speed of light so the earth must necessarily be curved thanks jamie uh no we'll go with the first part it, that is it just it's it is distance it's not curvature the range only goes so far and i've got navy personnel that says the same thing with their electronic uh warfare systems all day long which is it's distance it's not curvature sorry Hey, you got to pick, got to go with one or the other. If he says, you know, he's going, he's going, basically he's regurgitating the science books. This is no, it'll travel infinitely. It's like, no, no, it won't. Uh, not in, not in the, uh, not in the atmosphere. It won't remember you're, you're punching through water, it, you know, a thin version of water. I mean, I know people say, no, you're not, we're not breathing in water. And it's like, well, okay, fine. Water is H2O. Uh, but what we're breathing is N4O. It's four parts nitrogen to one part oxygen which is why you can only see so far what you're what you're looking through right now when you're reading this on your on your phone or your tablet is you're looking through something that's only about 99 percent transparent and as it gets compounded th as it gets thicker and thicker it becomes 90 percent then 80 and then so on and so on which is why you cannot see japan from california it is it has nothing to do with curvature it's because it just gets thicker over distances like looking through water. You remember, try to try to look towards the end of a swimming pool, 
and you can only see so far. And that's that's a swimming pool. Imagine an ocean. Anyway, uh, let's move on. Let's go on to this one, which is called from Fox News. NASA's InSight Mars lander reveals stunningly clear pictures of the red planet. NASA's InSight Mars lander. Yeah, there we go. Fox News. And that story hopefully will die soon. I used it as a thumbnail recently. And yeah, the InSight Mars lander. Just another drumbeat saying, that, oh yeah, by the way, we're in space even though we're not doing anything on Mars. And Elon Musk's headline, I think, was worse than that, where he said, oh, yeah, there's a 70% chance that I'll retire on Mars because he's done anything that he's ever said he was going to do. You got to remember, he, in fact, he just abandoned the, the light rail project in California. He's mentioned that you know he would solve Puerto Rico's power problems with his solar generators and uh, that he was going to develop a super plane that was going to go from the United States to China it, the cost of a first class ticket. Oh, what else? He's going to send tourists around the moon this year. He didn't do that. He's going. He's. We're going to colonize Mars in a year, year and a half from now. Uh, he every headline. In fact, it, I was really surprised. I'm so glad the New York Post jumped on this. Look up the New York Post article where it says Elon Musk is a total fraud. Literally, that was their headline, and it was very, it was pretty much everything I had said, which is he's never followed up on anything he's ever promised to do, ever, ever, ever. He's just he's about to drive the the Tesla car company into the ground. That's another thing, by the way. People's attention spans and their memory is so short term. If you ask the average person on the street who created Tesla Motors, there's a small percentage of them that would say, "Oh, it's Tesla." It's like really the guy that's been dead for a hundred years and that guy he's he's the guy that created tesla motors no they just used his name um elon musk did not create tesla motors it was created by a different set of guys elon musk bought tesla motors and just, you know he's just running it as a ceo is sort of like again kind of like mark cuban did not invent the dallas mavericks the city of dallas invented them or Ray Kroc, he didn't invent McDonald's. That was invented by the McDonald's brothers. He just bought it and franchised it. Or actually franchised it and then bought it and just bought them out, basically. And, and erased their memory to where nobody even knows who the McDonald's brothers were. I don't want to get into it. Sorry. That was a complete off-road thing from this particular headline. But thank you to Ryan Johnson for sending me that. This one's called, NASA just heard the first sounds of wind on Mars. You can hear them too. And that's from a CNN article, Wind on Mars. Oh, I've got to click on this article. I haven't even clicked on it yet. NASA just heard the first sound of Mars. You can hear it too. Yes, because there's wind. There's an atmosphere. What are you going to say now? Uh, what, is somebody going to say that w there's now oxygen and we can breathe there and walk around? No, it is just a drumbeat. Every time you hear the story, it doesn't matter if you read the article. All they want you to do is glance at the headline, which says, oh yeah, Mars exists. It's a real thing because you're in space. That's all they want you to know, period. This one's called Flight Paths. Uh, please, people, use paragraph breaks. This one needs at least three of them. But I'll, I'll read it. Uh, Mark, I pray this email finds you in good health and good spirits. My name is Kyle W. Smith. My friends call me Preacher. I am from Long Island, New York. I want to thank you for all you do regarding the flat earth. I have always been a truther. Things like 9-11, Sandy Hook, but I'm also a Bible thumper, a Bible truther. I run a ministry called Open Your Eyes Ministry. I minister men and women in prisons all over the U.S. and men and women. I, by the way, I'm, st I'm still not giving you a break for the paragraph thing. Don't care if you're uh, the most charitable person ever put in paragraph breaks uh, in recovery from drugs and alcohol. I am not your average Christian. I am a Sabbath keeper, non Trinity and only follow the Bible, which 99% of Christians are brainwashed by doctrines of men. So I came across a video 18 months ago called 40 Bible verses that prove the earth is flat. Of course I laughed and said, what a joke halfway through the video. I was no longer laughing at the scriptures. It clearly showed this. So I've been watching a lot of Rob Skiba and his work on the Nephilim. So I started to look to see if he had anything on this flat earth stuff and spent the next 18 months as Rob came to this truth. Of course, he got started with you listening to a podcast on the way to get his taxes done. So I started watching you as well. Love you put your phone number and email. I left you a message this morning. My question is, I have a person who, as Ron calls them, is my yay butt guy. Oh, yeah, butt guy. 
just so you know, I spell yeah, Y-E-A-H. Um, he put it Y-E-A, and I usually call that yay, which I know people will say, wasn't well, that Y-A-Y? That doesn't matter. But guys, I agree with Rob, <clears throat> as the Bible says, let God be true and every man a liar. But my friend's question is nagging me. I watched Clues 7 and 9 on the flight paths. But you didn't address is the flight 5% flights you find that go straight nonstop. They, yes, I did absolutely address it. They list flight times like 16 hours. Is that possible on a flat earth? My friend says that proved the earth is a globe because if it was flat, that flight should be like 30 hours. How do I answer these nonstop flights with times that are impossible on a flat earth? Thank you so much for taking the time to read this. I keep you in my prayers. That's from Kyle. And yeah, no, it's, I, it, it's why I made Clue 9, which was it. it's not the flights don't exist. It's that the routes can't be proven. That's the problem. Again, it's not that you even see the, you see the graphic on the screen, but the, uh, the latitude and longitude coordinates go into estimated or approximated mode. You can't prove the routes. So I don't care what the flight times are. Do not care because until the routes can be proven, what, what do you got? Uh, fine, they take off one way and they land another way. I don't know what the routes are because the planes literally disappear officially from the scopes for most of the journey. Nothing I can do there to, to help you, which again, look, watch Clue 9 again and, and understand what I'm trying to get across there, which is you can't prove the routes because the routes, there are no latitude and longitude coordinates. Those should be listed the entire time and they're not. Thank you that for that though. This one's called Friendly Local Sun. Hi, Mark. Here is some sunshine for your photo collection. Uh, that is a pretty shot. That is, I think, north of here. Just a little bit north on the islands. Northwest is a beautiful, beautiful place. Uh, it is, you know, it's not for the not for the fair weather people because we do get a lot of rainy days, although not as many lately, climate change. Uh, but some days are just fantastic. I mean, it's blue and green, and there's a massive amount of coastline. And there's, I mean, you just see a lot of forests, uh, forest-covered islands next to water. And it's just a, it's a beautiful place. So thank you for that. That was sent by Ann Hendricks. Great shot. This one's called Your Flat Earth Video. Mark, I'm not sure if this email address is correct. You know, anyone that puts that, you got to remember that nowadays it's instant. So if you try to send somebody, it's not like the old days where it took three days for an email to bounce back. Uh, now, if you say, if you put in an email address and it's wrong, it, it will, it let, you know, unless it goes to the wrong person, it bounces back immediately. If it's an invalid address, it's instant. Uh, I So don't worry about that. Uh, or even still valid, but I just watched one of your Flat Earth videos and I just wanted to say I really appreciate everything you're doing. Like many before me, probably you as well, are used to laugh at the thought of the Earth being flat. But over the last six months, I've done a plethora of research and ran into people like Eric Dubé, ODD TV, Jaronism, and you, and feel that I've been awakened from the matrix, so to speak. When I was younger, the globe Earth model never that quite right with me, especially once I became a Christian. I always wondered how everyone would see Jesus return on a globe Earth. Yep, good one. And I often wondered how the alleged scientists knew that stars in the sky were burning balls of gas. Uh, AKA suns that work billions and trillions of miles away, some even further than that. No, n now, no, I, oh, wow, sorry, grammar. No, I have now come to believe, now I have come to believe that we live in the flat earth and that all the cosmologies revolve around us. The so called planets are actually wandering stars, and the fixed star is all revolve around us with the center being Polaris or the North Star. Yes, I am now a true flat earther. And despite the fact that I've always been a very intelligent, logical person, everyone I speak to about it thinks I have turned into a bizarre conspiracy theorist and should be wearing a tinfoil hat. But the truth is I've always been a leader and a follower and I really don't care what other people think of me. I would rather know the truth about our world than believe a deception just because others want me to. It's honestly crazy, though, how many people refuse to even consider the possibility that we may have been taught a lie. I tried to have a talk with my mother about the fake moon missions, and she took personal offense, claiming that she was there during the whole thing. So how could she be wrong? Yeah, I know. Because if you were in the 60s, you watched it on television. It had to be real, right? I didn't realize she was an astronaut, but nonetheless, she refuses to even consider the possibility. Anyway, I don't even know if this email address works or if this is even you. So I will leave this for now. I would love to chat with you and learn more and even get involved somehow in the movement 
if possible. I believe this topic is one of the most critical subjects of all time, and literally proving the flat earth is also one step closer to proving God's existence and even Jesus Christ. I even I look forward to hearing back from you, assuming that I've emailed the right person and have typed it correctly. Best wishes, William Charles. Thank you, William, and I will write him back, tell him that I got it, and tell him to use spell checker a little differently. Because, again, if you use spell checker and just use the defaults and use the recommendations that it says, oh, yeah, the spell checker, I'd like to change this word to this. Uh, you're going to run into some issues here and there uh, because computers are still not AI, which is a whole nother discussion for another time. This one's called Flat Earth Question. Mark, at the time of writing this email, Elon Musk, SpaceX, SpaceX launched a Falcon 9 rocket into space and had two attached cameras. The Earth looked pretty spherical, if I'm honest, and it wasn't photoshopped either. <laughs> what are your thoughts and comments? And that's from LB on the track. Uh, yeah, if you think the Elon Musk Tesla in space roadster looked absolutely real, well, you'd be in the minority. There's a reason why that story didn't get a lot of traction, and that's because social media went on it and said, oh, wow, does that thing look fake? This one's called Flat Earth Clues Book. Hi, Mark. I've been watching you and other flat earthers on YouTube for a while now, and I do find this very interesting. My question for you is if the book of flat earth clues can be bought in Swedish, I must get my father to look into this subject. He's not that in for computers or YouTube or anything, but a book would be great. Thanks for a great YouTube channel. That's from Frederick in Sweden. And no, it is not in Swedish. So what I did was, if anyone wants uh, the flat earth clues book, in another language. I've got the text for most of the book, not the Q&A stuff at the end, obviously. But what I did, uh, I've got the the transcripts of all the Flat Earth Clues, which really is what the book is. And I will I'll send it, I'll just send you the transcripts and all you have to do is take it and say, and use any online translator. There's tons of them out there. They're all free and say, translate uh, English to Swedish. And it'll translate it for you as best it can, or you can translate it yourself if you really feel like it. Uh, but then you can just, you know, give them the translated version and run from there. So that'd be cool. Uh, also, you can, if I'm not mistaken, you can also close captioned uh, whatever language you are signed into your browser. When you're watching a video on YouTube, you can, uh, so remember, you've got to be signed in as that language. So all of YouTube would have to be Swedish. Uh, you just hit the closed caption button and it should translate it for you right there. So you could watch the video and you know, of course the voice wouldn't do anything for him, but the slides might, you can do it that way. So there's options. This one's called flat earth. Dear Mark, I've been watching your videos in the flat earth theory for a while now. I also believe we live on is flat. I also believe like you on the edge, the firmament dome is an unbreakable barrier. I then start thinking about asteroids and question myself. If we are surrounded by a dome, how do we explain the craters found in our so-called planet? Science says an asteroid is a quarter mile wide, killed off the dinosaurs. Are asteroids even real? Are we in danger from them? How far is the sun? Are the planets real? Would love to hear your thoughts on this. Best regards, Stephen. Uh, no, the, the, well, the craters are real, but they were probably done. I know how I would do it. Um, in between civilizations, like the giant uh, one in, well, the small one in Arizona and the really, really big one that makes up the Gulf of Mexico. Every between civilizations, you do do some terraforming. And as far as asteroids that happen nowadays, should you be afraid of them? No, no, not at all. Uh, you're just throwing rocks into an aquarium. All the asteroids we've seen so far have been really, really small. Uh, just introduce a piece of metal ore at speed and let the atmosphere heat them up and, and blow them up. And try not to aim at any cities. I mean, we find me an asteroid that has even landed near a populated area in the history of mankind. And don't you don't you dare give me the Tungus, Tunguska blast of 1908. Uh, find me uh, an asteroid that, that hit the ground somewhere where you know all of a sudden you even oh wow I, I don't even know where to go with this. There's so many too many avenues. You know what? We're getting close to the end of the show. Just believe it in this case the asteroids are not going to be harming you anytime soon and neither is nibiru for all the people that send me emails on nibiru this one's called need help with answers for my son who is a pilot 
All right. Hi, Mark. I enjoy your videos. I started on my journey about two to three months ago after I read the Book of Enoch. My first obstacle was the Apollo moon missions. I couldn't entertain the flat earth concept until I had come to terms with that. I had watched a lot of videos on that and finally concluded that it was a, all a show and we had been lied to. Then I started watching all kinds of flat earth videos, including yours. A week ago, I told my 38-year-old son, who is a pilot and he has his master's degree in aviation, about my journey. He about flipped out and thinks I have totally gone off the deep end. He is a solid Christian, and we have a good relationship. Before I even told him, I had been praying for truth for me and for the Lord to open my son's heart and mind to reveal truth to him as well. It is extremely important to me that I provide as much information as possible to him. He thinks that most flat earth people ignore all scientific facts and just dismiss serious questions. He and I had a long discussion this evening, and of course, I cannot answer all of his questions. I have heard about a lot of issues being discussed on the videos, but can't explain to him in, a logical, in logical scientific terms. He asked me a lot of questions like, how do you explain, colon, Clouds and weather systems that ro rotate in circular patterns. How do you explain satellites that orbit the Earth? How do they stay in orbit? And, and what are they orbiting around? How do you explain high and low tides? Uh, I have mentioned how NASA and scientists keep changing the shape of our globe to now we are ob oblong shaped. Uh, actually, it's uh, oblate, I think, oblate spheroid. Uh, he said it is because of the rotation of the Earth and the Earth stretches out at the poles. Mm -hmm. I asked him, wait, but why would it stretch out at the poles? They would stretch out the equator. That's if, if it was a globe, because that's centrifugal force. Man, maybe she wrote it wrong. Uh, I asked him how he, as a pilot, can fly from one point to another on a spinning ball and always use the same coordinates and the Earth not fly away from him. He gave the example of a fly traveling 80 miles an hour in a car. Nope. Nope. Can't use that. Not for the Earth. Uh, the fly stays in the car and we stay in place because of Earth's... There we go. Gravity. Always oh, freaking gravity. Coming from agriculture, we did our share of irrigating. Water always runs to the lowest level. I asked him, how about the water in the ocean doesn't run to one side of the earth along the curvature? He said, gravity. Yep, there you go. Gravity is always the answer for everything. This magical, mystical force that science cannot duplicate. They can only say what the symptoms are of it. Uh, and he said something about motion relativity. I'm probably not even saying it like he did. I tried to tell him about the firmament and the dome that is over us and how we live in an enclosed system. I gave him an example about railroads not configuring their railroad tracks to compensate for the curvature of the earth. He said that they are flexible enough <laughs> uh -huh. that they don't need to take the curvature of the earth into consideration with building tracks. Plus, the curvature is so gradual it doesn't affect it. Oh, yes, it does. Uh, when I started the reading the Book of Enoch, I had sent it to him as well. I asked him tonight if he had read it, and he said that he had. I'm hoping that eventually I can create a dialogue between the two of you. Oh, good luck. I had watched a lot of videos. You know what? I'm going to send uh, the testimony shows to her because that should really, really help him. Mean, he's not going to listen to me, but he is going to listen to his peers. And I have a number of pilots that I've spoken to. And as you know, you can't cover everything in one video, but I'm praying for and seeking something that will get his attention and make him question what he has been taught. As with all of us, it's a hard pill to swallow when you find out that we've been lied to all our lives and to the extent that they will go to perpetuate their lies. To me, this has been... Uh, this has to be established before one can even entertain the flat earth model was the best Apollo moon video that clearly shows that it's all fake. All of them pretty much. Uh, what is the best flat earth video that would get his attention? You know, I'm going to send him all this stuff. Uh, I tried to tell him about the firmament and the dome that is over us and how come we live in an enclosed system. Thanks for all your help uh, to God be the glory. And that's from Cindy Lepke in Grand Forks, North Dakota. And that is definitely going in my to-do pile, and I will take care of that today. All right, a couple more, then we'll call this one quits. Uh, this one's called Question About the Sun and Flat Earth. Hi, Mark. I'm very intrigued by your extensive knowledge and information you provide in your videos. I've recently subscribed to your YouTube channel, as it's hard to get your videos to even come up in a search. I don't know if that's true. I've shared quite a few of your amazing videos now with my friends and family. I'm thinking about the sun and when it rises and sets on a flat earth model, how it disappear downward over the horizon and rise upward. That's uh, atmospheric distortion, atmospheric lensing, Fata Morgana effects, all those things. Uh, that's, that's like my only thing to question about this. I understand our vision perception, but I'm confused with that aspect. Do you maybe have a video already out on this fl that, I, that I could find? Thanks you so much in advance. Uh, if you still do get your emails and reply, but there's a lot of closed-minded sheeple that send you spams all the time. No, they don't. I hardly get any troll emails. 
Hardly ever. Mostly because trolls are lazy and they don't want to give out because they their real email address. And it's not hard to spoof an email. So why not just create a fake Gmail account and send it to me? If you're going to troll me, it's because trolls are lazy. But why they hardly ever call either. They'll, they'll comment on YouTube all the time. That's because it's easy and that's anonymous. But emailing me, that's a notch up. And trolls, it's one of the first rules of trolls. Which is, well, the first one is stay anonymous. And the second one is be lazy. Uh, anyway, that's from Tom in Longmont, Colorado, and I will send him. Sorry, I'm sorry, Tom, if you're listening, uh, there's several people that have done videos on this. The the first I would refer you to DITRH, which is known as Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole. I would refer you to Rob Skiba. I refer you to Zeteticism.com. Uh, that's also his YouTube channel. Uh, there's a whole bunch out there that, that talk about the sun and how it sets. Go for that. Let's do one more. This one's called Virgin Galactic. Hey, Mark Carl here. I'm a new possible flat earther, flat or not. I'm super disappointed in the tech that we do have. Even if it isn't real, it's not near what I always believed it to be. Yes, that's so true. Years ago, I was watching ESPN and there was a high altitude competition for a small rocket craft built by regular people like you or I in our garage building these things. One thing I remember was a Virgin Galactic craft, yep, that had cameras all over it so you could see space and the ground as well as the pilot. After watching some of your videos, I did a little research to see if I could find any footage on the matter and I came up empty. I did find an arrival by Wikipedia on Virgin Galactic that you might find interesting. Thanks, Mark. Love the videos. Let me know uh, what you think about that. Yeah, Virgin Galactic. Uh, distant second to the whole SpaceX thing. I think they were looking for some sort of private space program that they could endorse and the united states decided to go with spacex which is an interesting choice and the elon musk is completely bought and paid for absolutely compromised he may not know, know all the secrets but he is doing whatever they tell him to and uh, virgin galactic just never made the cut so everything that they said they were going to do they didn't and every every story they ever run oh yeah we're going to do this in two years we're going to do this in three years is just to raise capital and then they do nothing with it all right let's just end on that note uh thank you for everybody that wrote in so far and everyone's going to write in, in the future remember you can send your emails to msargent23 at comcast.net that's m-s-a-r-g-e-n-t 23 at comcast.net until next time, guys, stay flat.